was with Dr. King. We did an interview of a thousand. I'm not going to get into this, but we looked at a thousand cancer patients that had died from cancer. We just interviewed their friends, their relatives, loved ones, people around them. And I'm going to give you an idea of something so that you understand how traumatic your emotions are inside of your body when you, when you do this. And there's a reason for having those emotions. I'm going to show you that before we finish. But there was not one case that we interviewed that did not have an extreme trauma, loss of a job and financial stress. Something had happened, a death in the family, a loved one. A, you know, something happened that caused a trauma that made those children, those people, their body was fighting the cancer on a regular basis. It was holding it off. It was, it was preserving itself. And then the trauma reversed that attention and took away that defense mechanism and put it someplace else to balance another problem. And when that happened, the cancer manifested itself. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. This is important to understand. And I don't care whether it's hate because you don't like your brother-in-law or it's some other problem. Those are the kind of things that we have to learn to adapt to. You see, just because people don't get along with me, I can get upset and mad and angry about it, but why? Did it hurt the person that did something to me? Not at all. But it hurts me. And it affects me. And that's not part of God's program. That's not part of the ways of life that we need to adjust and adapt to. So at any rate, that, that ends that. And the way that this ends, which is really kind of interesting, it says if you fit any one of these categories and are not going to change, then don't squander your health practitioner's time, whether it's your medical doctor or, or your naturopath or your nutritional consultant or or your upline or whoever, it says, please use the offered gift certificate on the other side. Now, I think that the gift certificate was valid for a long time, but it's not valid anymore. It was a gift certificate from the office of Jack Kervorkian, and that it kind of indicates that that's where you were interested in going, and uh, so it says, just go ahead and do it, you know. Had the opportunity of working with a doctor by the name of Bernard Jensen. And, and Dr. Jensen was an old friend. When I, ha I had a, the clinic in the Los Angeles area, and he was around the corner, and I used to see him uh, routinely. I'd be walking for lunch, and he'd be standing outside and high, and he'd tell me all kinds of good things for health, and I'd tell him to give him a shot. You know, get him out of there, run him in, and run him out. And he'd spend an hour, hour and a half with a patient, and you could run him through in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, in and out. And, and so at any rate, I, I learned a great deal from this man. Well, I hadn't seen doctor for 38 years. And we determined that a few years back when I was talking with his wife, Marie, and we were sitting around talking. And she said, well, you know, it's, it's been 38. How they found me, I don't know. But Dr. Jensen ended up with prostate cancer that had metastasized to the bone. Now, if you don't know who Dr. Jensen is, Dr. Jensen is one of the great greats in the natural healing field. He's an expert in iridology. He wrote the book, The Chemistry of Man. He wrote, in the past, 53 books. He had treated kings and queens and nobles all over the world. He had helped the, the hundreds of children when they were sick, he showed, he showed the, the healers in Hunza how to give them certain herbs in the field and took them right out of their crisis. And so a brilliant man, a wonderful man, ended up with prostate cancer. His PSA was 1,600. It had metastasized to the bone. They had him on medication, and they didn't care how much medication he got because he was dead. As far as they were concerned, this man was not going to make it. His family had visited him for the last time, went back to the ranch and said, Dad will never be back. Told all his friends, He'll, you know, that's it, he's done. 
employees that had been with him for some 35 years had come to visit him for the last time. They flew in and flew back. Sad that they were losing such a great leader. How do you classify Dr. Jensen? You put him in a category of great greats like Adele Davis, John Christopher, Dr. Lust. These were all people that had in the healing arts field accomplished great and wonderful things. I could go through a whole list of names. His wife called me and I said, how did you find me? Because I had moved several times, had not been in contact with them for years. And she said, oh, she said, I had, I, I started looking and someone that I knew told me that they thought that they knew where you were and she just called and called and called until she tracked me down. She asked me if I would come in. <clears throat> and I went in to see a man that was 85 years old. He weighed 76 pounds. As far as they were concerned, he was dead. They took him off of the medication long enough to talk to me. And in this broken voice, in this broken voice, a raspy broken voice, he said, I just want to die. Just want to die. Now that's the first problem that you face in the healing crisis. You can't get someone well that wants to die. That's number one. Number two, he was on medication, and medication slows bowel transit time. Here's a man that wrote the book on bowels, and he hadn't had a bowel movement in 15 days. They were still feeding him. They were trying to fatten him up. So the first thing that we did, I'm going to give you an idea of, of what you have to look at now when it comes to healing. Here was a crisis, and I'm going to cover this with something that Dr. John Christopher, the herbalist from Utah, did so you understand. Here was a crisis. To feed him was not going to do him any good. The first thing we had to do was change his attitude. So I sat there and I talked to him about people, great greats in the industry that he knew and that I knew. I talked with him about Adele Davis, about Betty Lee Morales, about John Lust, uh, uh, Christopher, all of them. And I said, you know, Doc, I said, think about this for just a minute. I know you're miserable, I know you don't feel good, but don't you think that one of these great greats should be willing to do what they have said all of their life, what they have taught all of their life, don't you think that one of them should be willing to do that and show people that you can win? And he said, yes. He said, I, I guess so. And I said, well, you know what, Doc? You're the last one. There's nobody but you. If you don't do it, it won't get done. The fact that I got over cancer naturally, the fact that I got over cirrhosis of the liver naturally, that doesn't count because I'm not a great great. And so the first thing that he did, the first thing that he did was he accepted that challenge. Wow. He said, I'll do it. I said, all right, now here's where we're going to start. What was the next thing we had to do with him? Move his bowels. You try going without having a bowel movement for 15 days, you know, you're going to be miserable whether you have cancer or not. <laughs> so we got his bowels moving. And that was the sequence that we had to follow with this man. We got his bowels moving. And what's the next thing? Why did Dr. Jensen get sick? With all that he knew, the chemistry of man, he had healed people with natural foods all over the world. What happened to him? Well, he was taking care of everybody else, but what wasn't he doing? You see, 
Well, he didn't take his own advice, but there was something missing. He was eating organic foods. He was doing all of these things, but he was cooking it. You, do you have the picture? Well, what happened to all those old people, you know? We, uh, and they go through this. Now, when you cook food, and I'm going to prove this to you today so that there's never going to be a doubt in your mind again, because I will take you back to the 1950s and the 1920s and show you exactly what happens. They've known it for all of this time. When you cook food, you kill all of the workers. And so you begin depleting your body of the workers. And there's only two things in your body that ever are going to do any work. Only two things. Enzymes and bacteria. There's the only two things. And on a daily basis, you wipe out enzymes. You wipe out enzymes inside of your body. And there's several ways that you can achieve this without even knowing it. The first way is that you are in rooms with people that smoke. Smoking nicotine kills every known enzyme in the body. The second thing that you do is you eat food that's cooked. And so your body can't manufacture enzymes. I'm going to show you how that works. How do you wipe out bacteria? Do you know that your body right now, you're sitting here, the average person has two pounds of bacteria. Do you think those are good bacteria or bad bacteria? They're bad. Those are E. coli, Pseudomonas, all the bad, mean, nasty things. Because the friendly ones get wiped out with chlorine in your drinking water. They get wiped out with antibiotics in your food. How many of you had your antibiotics this morning? You see. After you come back from lunch, I'm going to say, how many of you had your antibiotics today? Nobody. Did you have chicken? Did you have fish? Did you have hamburger? They load these things with antibiotics. Okay? Antibiotics are a chemical. Gets into that tissue. When the animal is sacrificed so that you can enjoy it, doesn't get rid of the chemical out of the tissue, so when you eat it, it does the same thing in you that it did in the animal. You have put that antibiotic into yourself. So there's many ways that we have on a routine basis, and I'm going to answer questions this afternoon. Uh, and this afternoon, we're going to take a break in about an about up 45 minutes or so. But what I'd like to do is let you know that when you come up and you're going to want to ask questions, I'm not going to answer them because I want you to ask questions so that everybody can get the benefit of what you're asking. Because if I answer your question then in, in an hour and a half or two hours afterwards, you, you know, everybody else is going to want to know the same thing. Because believe it or not, we're pretty much alike. Yes, we are. Okay. You know why? because we were created in his image and likeness. So I'll show you a picture of Dr. Jensen and I'm gonna tell you that this is going to launch us into some of the things that we, we do. This is Dr. Bernard Jensen. He's 35 pounds heavier here than he was when I started working with him. Wow. And what Dr. Jensen did was this. <coughs> we got him well. And here's the story. I started him the only two different things I did with this man was we number well we did a couple things we got his attitude to where he wanted to live we got his bowels moving and then we gave him enzymes and bacteria and we gave him a lot of enzymes and a lot of bacteria those are the only two things that do any work in your body now this is important to understand people say well how many can I take or should I take or whatever well how quick do you want the job done do you understand what I'm saying? Well, we were going to build a home in Montana. And they said, oh, that's going to take 10 months. I said, well, it's 3,000 square feet. What do you mean 10 months? Oh, well, you know, it, it's about 10 months to do that. 
And I said, well, in Las Vegas, they built a 5,000 room hotel with casinos and restaurants and shops and everything. And they do that in 18 months. And the guy looked at me and smiled and he said, oh, but they have more workers than we do. <laughs> okay? So when it comes to redoing your body, to regenerating, to restructuring, to achieving this, you have to ask yourself what the time limit is and how many workers you want to put in to get that job done. And the more workers you have doing the work, the quicker the work gets done. Okay? Do you, are you following me? Yes. Now, if you're not in a crisis, Dr. Jensen was in a crisis. But if you're not in a crisis, then you can do it on a regular basis over a period of time and achieve the same positive result. Okay? So, here he was. What happened to him is after we got him well, two weeks after he was well and functioning and doing great, he went out with Gavin McLeod. This is another story, the other side of the story. And Gavin, do you know who Gavin McLeod is? He was the, the captain of Love Boat. And Gavin and his wife and Doc and Marie went out for dinner. Now, I have no idea what they ate, but maybe they were getting a lesson. I'm not sure. But they went out for dinner, and on the way back, Gavin's Cadillac was rear-ended by a semi, and it crunched it like an accordion. Snapped Doc's back, and he was paralyzed from the waist down. And so that's a picture of him in his hospital bed after he was paralyzed from the waist down. Okay? The long and the short of that story is he went for about five or six months. His wife called me and she said he, he went to several different specialists and they all told him he'd never walk again. He was at Scripps Institute, in La Jolla, California, and they, they had just come in and tested him and they said, you'll never walk again, that's it. And his wife said he's very depressed. Uh, they told him that he wouldn't walk again. Would I please come down and see him? I went down and, and spent some time with him. What, what did we do? What was lacking in his life? We, we put him into a pro, we put him back onto the, into the enzymes and the bacteria. We got that going again. Got him back into digesting and assimilating and utilizing protein. And you can talk to Gene and them about that. They've got a lot of product back there that you can give some, you know, just take a look at. Because it's going to change your life. And so, the, uh, we started him on that program and I have a beautiful letter from him that says, I dedicated my first steps to you. Uh -huh. Okay? That's not the key. Did I do anything for him? No. It was all God. It's always God in nature. You see? And, and so I can't take that kind of credit because there's nothing that I could have done to make his body work. Absolutely nothing, you know. But share ideas of health that he was willing, here's your key, that he was willing to do faithfully, regularly, to achieve the results. So at any rate, this is what he looked like when he was paralyzed. I'd like to show you what he looked like last year. Her, no, this is three years ago. Same man getting the President's Award uh, from the National Health Federation for his work in, in health. Was he walking? There's a picture of him in one of his latest books. He's written seven books uh, recently, but there's a picture of him standing beside his wheelchair with a for sale sign on it. Okay. so. Here's the, an here's the question, can you win over anything? And my, my personal feeling is there's nothing that you cannot overcome if you're willing to put the effort in. But other people, other people cannot do it for you. You must be willing to do it yourself. Okay, they can guide you, they can coach you, they can encourage you. But can they do the work? No. I'd like to show you a picture. My mother had kidney failure.